y'all? This is Drake's One. Welcome to another episode of the History of the Bay podcast, sponsored by the good people of Amoeba Music San Francisco, also sponsored by the people of Dying Breeze San Francisco. You can get all your graffiti supplies from them on 24th Street. Also, shout out my folks at Mojo Labs, always keeping me laced up. Sometimes you ask me where I get the gear from, go check out Mojo Labs. And today, as usual, behind the lens, we got King Said on the board. We got D.E.O. We got a few brothers in the house today. We got DJ Gutter Butter in the house. We got Lil Kilo in the house. We got Lil Slimmy B. Right. We got <laughs> Big Slimmy B. No. You know him as one quarter of the group, SOB, RBE. Since done is a lot of solo things, and uh, it's a young Bay Area legend that we have happy to have on the platform. That part, that part. You know what it is? Slimmy B coming up out the V. <laughs> The crest to be exact, though, but you know. That's right. You feel that's me? Right, that's right, man. Looking forward to chopping it up with you, man, because uh, you've been part of a big, a whole wave, man. The SOB RBE wave really changed the game in okay. the Bay Area. And um, it's been some years since y'all first came out, and uh, you, you do, you've been doing your solo thing. Yeah, yeah. You got a new project with, with DJ Gutter Butter coming out. On that, on that, too. Make sure you go get that February. February 8th. Pre-order's out right now. Check the link in my bio. But you know. Yeah, so I think this, that might, that'll probably be out by the time this interview drops. Oh, yeah, it probably gonna be out by the time. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. okay. So y'all already gonna be slapping it by then, so you know what it is. That's yeah. right, that's right. Make oh, yeah. sure you go run that up for the boy, man. Make sure you go run that up for Slimmy. But um, like you said, man, Crestside, California. Yes, sir. We, we've been interviewing quite a few people from the Crest lately. We just had Big Kilo up here not Shout too long out, ago. Shout out, Aunt. Yes. Shout out, Aunt. So what was that like growing up, man? Man, uh, fun, amazing, a lot of a lot of shit going on just all the time. Uh, man, just fun though. It's my childhood, you know. Growing up, growing up, growing up, seeing all the, like the big the big people, Dre to Unc, um, Kilo to Don, Big Don. Um, just seeing them pull up, Benz is. You know, the young niggas pulling up scrapers, everything. It was, it, was, it was a lot. It was a lot. It was a lot going on. I loved it, though. I yeah, loved it. That's a neighborhood with a, with a lot of culture. A lot of culture. A lot of, um, man, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff. It's a lot, a lot, a lot of, of stuff. action. A lot of action. <laughs> yeah. A lot of action. No cap. That's right. That's right. Mm-hmm. Um, so at what point did, did music come into your life? Um... I really like music my whole life for real, but I think I made my first song. It was 11th grade. I remember at school, I mean, at lunchtime, I used to leave school and then go to the house and record music with my partner, uh, Mario. And then one day I was just like, man, I need to put it out. You feel me? I'm making all this music. I'm playing. I might as well just put it out and see what they do. Drop the song, and I think I went to school the next day, and everybody was like, ooh, I heard that. Ooh, ooh. You feel me? So I'm like, okay. They really messing with me. Like, I'm, that I'm, was what, like SoundCloud or something? YouTube? Or? YouTube, YouTube, uh-huh. YouTube. Game plan, game plan. Still on my YouTube today. Okay. Yeah, first video on YouTube, game plan. If y'all want to hear it, check it out. Game plan, Slimmy B. No cap. So it was instant. It was instant, and you saw uh, that you could, you, you already had like a following on, out of, like out the gate. Uh, I want to say a big following, but the reaction I got from when I dropped the song, I knew it was something. You knew you were like, doing okay, something. Okay, okay. Yeah. You feel me? I know it could be something here. You feel me? I wanted to ask you this. Yeah. What are, like, who are your big influences in terms of your rapping style? In my rapping style? Um, I don't know. Well, I'm going to say, well, I listen to a lot of Dre, of course, but, like, back in the day, I used to listen to all type of music. You feel me? So I ain't never really picked up on somebody's style and was like, oh, okay, you feel me? I'm trying to, I'm trying to go like that. Are you feeling me? I just listen to a lot of music, take a lot of music in, and I just put it together. I put it together. The reason I ask is because I think since SOBRBE came out, yeah, there's a lot of biters. It is a lot of biters. <laughs> Shout out to the biters though, man. They keep, they keep, they keep us relevant, man. You feel me? <laughs> There's a lot of youngsters and some OGs too, even. No cap, no cap, no cap. I hear them rap. I'm like, man, that's SOB right mm-hmm. there. I ain't gonna say no names, but you know. No, we ain't gotta say no names, but so you, you've noticed that as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Throughout everybody, through me, all the other group members, everybody, people been biting our style since since we came out. But you know, that's all part of the game. If they ain't biting you, they ain't you ain't popping. So no. I think that just shows like how big the wave y'all y'all made 
And okay. really was. Um, okay. But that's also why I asked who were your influences because I feel like yeah. you've already influenced a lot of people. Well, I listen to, like, want to tell you people like I used to listen to? Sure. Uh, growing up in the Bay? Bay I mean, area? Bay, yeah, uh, wherever. A lot of Filthy Rich. I remember when DB the General came out, he was hot. He was hot as hell. Everybody wanted to rap like DB at a point in time. Um, a lot of live wire from Lil Blood to shit, the whole live wire. Everybody from live wire, damn near. Jay Stallion, all of them, you know. Everybody for real. Everybody in the Bay that was popping at the time of me coming up. I was slapping, you feel me? We're talking like 2010 to like 2014, 20 type of era. I mean, I was outside when I was young, so probably okay. like 06. 06, okay. You feel so. me? That's when I really start getting into music and, you know, hearing it there, there, going to parties, venturing off. I was young, venturing off to other cities, and I played basketball when I was young, so I was around the different stuff. I was all around the Bay. Right. So, you know, I was hooping and everything, listening to what they got going on, so there was a lot of people I was listening to. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, I don't think I don't think you've copied anybody in your rap style. I think it's very unique, but hearing some of those names like that makes sense. Yeah. I can hear that in yeah. some of the music you make, some of the beats that y'all pick and all, all that. Facts. Definitely Barry. So how how did the, the rest of the members of the group come about? Because it's two crews, right, that basically came together yeah, to that, form SOBRBE. Yeah, SOB and then RBE. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, the boy... Um, we used to go to this pub. We used to go to our partner um, Kyrie house and record over there, but his studio wasn't really up to par for real. So the boy used to be on the game with Young T.O. making songs, doing the game, doing whatever they do on the game. And one day he was like, uh, "Man, I'm gonna call T.O. over here to, uh, to you know, to, uh, try to help us with the music thing because he sounded like that nigga sound sounded like perfect. You feel me? His mic, his everything, his whole setup was perfect. So I was like, damn, you know, call that nigga over here. Boom, he came over. He um. He showed us a song, and I was like, man, this shit sound like mainstream. You feel me? Like some real shit. So I was like, uh, yeah, I ain't gonna lie. We gotta, we, gotta, we gotta fuck with bro. Like, you feel me? So from there, I think I was the first person to go over his house. I think I hit him like a day or a day after and was like, man, I'm trying to come record. And then I went over there and recorded everything. You feel me? My sister. So your, your friendship pretty much came through the music. Yeah, I didn't know him prior to the music. I seen him around on Facebook. He was Mac Wan at first. So I seen him around on Facebook and uh, he was doing his thing on Facebook or whatever and did uh, when the boy introduced us. Then. It was after that. That's when it started popping. And uh, who who else from the group? Because y'all from different parts of North Vallejo, right? Yeah. So who else is from the Crest? I'm from the Crest. Uh, Lil G from the Crest. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Okay. Yeah. And, and the other two brothers are from different parts of the North. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So how did and then Lil G, how did you how did you link with him? Did you know him just from the neighborhood? Yeah, just from the neighborhood. Lil G been around. He um he been around just from the neighborhood. Boys and girls club, everything. We didn't did it all. Yeah. You know, nigga been around for real. What was the decision to like turn it into a whole a whole group? Um, it really wasn't no decision. The shit happened so organically, it wasn't no like all right, y'all want to make this a group type shit? Like, you feel me? Everything just start going from me going to the studio to us going to the studio to, all right, what you go? Y'all RB, you RB, you might as well put it together to, boom, putting it together. Like, I could remember everything happening. It just, you know, correspondingly just start happening. It wasn't really no plan behind it. We just, everything happened organically for real. Yeah, that's why I asked because obviously I'm familiar with, with y'all, but uh, I don't know the full story. And every it did seem like, just from the outside looking in, it did seem like everything was happening hella fast for y'all. Man, that shit happened fast as hell. It happened so fast, you know, I really couldn't... I mean, the shit just happened fast. The shit just happened hella fast. And it was like, man, right before nigga eyes, for real. So we really couldn't... I can't pinpoint to like when, you know... Like, when do we come? Or are we this? We this now? Because that shit happened so fast. It was just like, yeah. song after song after song, group. You feel me? What was the first song that really cracked off for you? That really cracked off? Well, what was the first song? The first video we ever dropped basically as like a group, or me and T.O. dropped was Cautious. I remember when Cautious came out, boom. I remember us telling, saying, um, 
Man, everybody get this to 10K, woo, 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 woo. Because back then, 10K was big. Now, sure. niggas look at 10K and be like, man, what, the, what, what am I doing? I need to step it up. I'm doing yeah. 10K? <laughs> man, I can't. You feel me? But back then, it was big. Yeah, it was yeah. before people were playing, paying for views. Everything was organic. Right. It really, you feel me? The streets was, uh, you know the streets feeling you once your views going up. So, it was cautious. And then, um, after that, what we dropped? I want to say, um, D-Boy... This one I really figured out it was all right. We got something. We I think we dropped cautious and then D Boy dropped the um just a song. I forgot what song it was. Uh, I think a hundred bar or something like that. He dropped a song and we just start motherfuckers start slapping it. We getting on um, Instagram. Everybody slapping it. People tagging. I'm like man, they really niggas fucking with it. People from different places, Seattle and shit. I'm like oh shit. So after that I knew we had some shit kicking off. Man, it's interesting. You know, I talk to a lot of people from a lot of different areas of the Bay Area music. Mm-hmm. And um, in the early 2000s, it was like MySpace. Yeah. People could put a MySpace song and add it to their profile. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, we had Irk the Jerk on here. He was talking about when Twitter first popped off. Yeah. And, and yeah. he was just literally sending people his music through yeah. Twitter. Yeah. And um, what you're talking about, is is not necessarily like the early days of Instagram, but it's earlier than now to where, like you said, this is before people's paying for views, paying for streams. Yeah. It's like you post a video, you post a song, and people actually fuck with it and, and yeah, so. start, start spreading it around. It wasn't, it wasn't the earliest days of Instagram, but it was early, though. It yeah. Was early. It was definitely early. Yeah. So, yeah. so we had um, Stretch and Kilo on here, mm-hmm. and they were both saying that at a certain point, y'all, before maybe the rest of the world, the rest of the country, even the rest of the Bay, yeah. knew y'all, y'all were like tearing shit up in Vallejo, like in terms of like shows. Yeah. Selling, selling out shows and, and lines around the block. Yeah, it was legendary. Our first show was legendary. Our first show got, uh, the police shut our first show down ever at the Boys and Girls Club in uh, College Park in Vallejo. That was a legendary show though. How long? How long after y'all had started making music did did you go to? to did that show happen? Uh, let me think. Uh, Anti was already out. Lane changing was already out. I think different was already out. So I think all all our songs, all our main songs, was just now. Everything hit at once, so everything was already out. You feel know I me? Mean? And then we um, Lil Kilo put the show together. Matter of fact. And we thinking, like, I don't know how the show go be. You feel me? We go pack it out. You feel me? We don't know how the show go be. Man, we get to the show. If you know Vallejo, then you know where MIT at. You know where Elsa Wiedemann at. And you know, it was a gate. It's a gate around the um, the Boys and Girls Club. From this side of the gate all the way down the street, down Mini Drive, all the way to um, all the way to Elsa Wiedemann where the line was at. You feel me? Not even, not even Polly. Not even Polly. Only probably 30, 30 to 40% of people got in. You hear me? Mm. That's how big it was. It was really, that was a night to remember. I remember that night like it was yesterday. That was a fun ass night too. Was was the feeling like, okay, we about to do some shit like this? Because it's one thing when you got numbers on the internet yeah. and Instagram and all that, but when you see people in person, it's different. It's, it's, different. Different. it's different. It's it's like you said, it's one thing to have the numbers on Instagram, the views on that. But it's hard to go sell out a show, you feel me? To have people come and want to see you, it make it feel different. It's just different, you know? And um, yeah, when that when on that day, not I'm not I'm not gonna lie and say I knew it was gonna be something big, but I just I like I had a feeling like, man, we stars, you feel me? Like I felt it and I was like, man, niggas, we stars right now. I done borrowed my, borrowed the bins from um my uncle Donnie. <laughs> I'm in the bins, I'm cat, and I'm like, oh, you feel me? I'm already, I'm in my mode. <laughs> and then from there I just we just kept it lit. And you're, you're still teenagers. Yeah, I was teenager. I was uh, 19. That's a damn good feeling, 19. bro. 19. Yeah, I was a damn good feeling on oh, God. 19. So we got we got a little kilo in the house today. I'm, we'll, I'm going to talk to him a little later. Yeah. But um, at some point, he brought you to Big Kilo. Mm-mm. No. Mm-mm. Okay. Um, we used to be We used to be on a block. We used to shoot our videos on the block and we used to hang out on the block on um, Simonton Street. So we used to all be on Simonton Street and we used to be at our partner, or well, my partner, um, Donna House. And I was across the street from Kilo Grandma House. Okay. So we always just on the block conversating. We'll do, we'll be shooting videos and everything. And he keep telling us, man, you know, I'm a, uh, 
I make the call to stretch, man. Um, y'all ready? Well, we, I don't know who stretch is at the point in time. So I'm like, uh, you feel me? I don't. Matter of fact, the day we was shooting lane changer is the day we met stretch. You feel me? We shooting lane changer. He calling us, man. He over here. He over here, man. Y'all got to hurry up. We don't care because it's like, mm, we shooting our video. I don't give a, you feel me? I don't know who stretch is. Mm-hmm. You feel me? I'm hearing what they saying, this, this, that, that. But I'm like, I don't, you feel me? So we, um, yeah, we shooting lane changing. We go to the S to finish shooting lane changing. And, um, that's when we met Stretch. That's when we met Stretch. And that's hella funny because I always remember this. Stretch asked me what kind of car I wanted. And I was like, man, I want a CL. And that's just hella funny that he asked me that because I'm thinking about, at that, that day, I'm, I'm like, man, I need a car. I need a whip. I need a whip. And it's just so ironic that that nigga said that. That's why that's just hella funny. I remember that. But uh, that was the day we met Stretch. And from there, we, uh, it was over with. Did he help you get that CL? Nah, he didn't help me get a CL. <laughs> but he helped me get an Aston and a lot of other, you feel me? You, you go. feel me? Okay. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Stretch, though. That's my guy. Love him to death. Yeah, so that he he was also saying that basically by the time he came around, y'all had your music, you had your graphics, you kind of yeah. had merchandise, T-shirts, yeah. all that. You're already doing shows. Yeah. So what was the next step to take the group <laughs> further from there? Mm. Basically, get us from out the hood and what we was doing inside the Bay Area, and take it to a national level. He actually put us on our first, our first real tour, our first tour ever. Um, I was with Sage. I was Sage. Uh-huh. West for the winter, or winter for the West. I forgot which one, but uh, you know, I was Sage Jim. And I shout out him too for even taking us on that tour. You feel me? And believing us and knowing, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Big bro. So now you're hitting other cities. Other cities. Bigger shows. Bigger shows. And it's just like. Because we in the Bay, we ain't went outside the Bay yet. We still in the Bay. We never went outside, none of that. So we get on tour. We don't know what to expect. We thinking, uh, you know, it's going to be cracking. That's all I'm thinking. It's going to be cracking. You feel me? Rather, even if they know us, even if they don't know us, I know it's going to be cracking. So we get on the tour and, um, man, it was way more than I expected. They actually, everybody, er, everywhere we went, they knew us. You feel me? To the point where, like, damn, they, they, they fucking with us like that. I don't know. Uh, shit was crazy. Yeah, it's interesting. Y'all came around at an interesting time in the West Coast. Like I said, that there's a lot of influence that y'all have had in other people's styles. But I feel like not just in the Bay, I hear a lot of L.A. rappers. Yeah. And yeah. I hear I hear a lot of SOB, RBE influence. Yeah. But this is also at a time when, like, Shoreline Mafia is coming out. Okay. O3 okay. Guido, mm-hmm. um, Draco the Ruler, yeah. Ralphie the Plug, all them. Yeah. Um, so I feel like y'all kind of fit in pretty well with that. That wave of the new West Coast. Nah, for sure, for sure. We um we definitely fit in. We definitely I think we got songs with if not everybody on there, then mostly everybody on there. So we all was working. You feel me? Ralph from Ralphie, Draco, RP Bro from um O three. I remember seeing O three at uh at uh I forgot what festival it was, Dan Knight at uh the Angel Stadium. I don't know if you remember that, but he went on and performed um he went on and performed in like in the middle of somebody's set, but didn't nobody really know O3 at the time. Niggas knew him, but didn't nobody really know him for real. So I'm like, man, that's O3, cause a female I put me on O3. Somebody from um his hood. You feel me? I messed with a female in LA. She put me on O3. I'm like, man, who is this nigga? And I just oh, she was slapping that mafia. I was like, ooh, like you feel me? That motherfucker go crazy. And I seen him, I'm like, man, what's up with O3? He's like, man, Slimmy O, I ain't even know. Ooh. I'm like, man, this shit crazy. Shout out O3 though. Yeah, it's yeah. dope. Y'all, y'all getting all types of recognition, and yeah. um, your first album was a was a major label uh, project, no? No, still independent. Well, not um, everything. Everything was Empire. All our albums went through Empire. We didn't go through nobody else's Empire. Okay, everything was Empire, which is a major, but you know. Uh, yeah, I think technically uh-huh. they're independent, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, do you got to be a major to be independent? I don't know what the fuck the definition yeah, of a major definition really of a major? is. They yeah. got a major artist. Yeah. So it ain't like, you feel me? I think a major is when it's an even bigger company behind them. Like a Sony. Yeah. Universal. Yeah, if you ain't Universal, Sony, all yeah. that, then you ain't major. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but shout out to Empire. Shout out to Gazi. Shout out to Gazi. For real, for real. Changed my life, too. So that first album, what's the name of that first album? Remind me again. The debut. The SOB um, RBE album. I think it was just SOB. It's RV. self-titled, right? I think it was just SOBRV. That's how you know he's doing numbers. SOBRV? 
Okay. Yeah. That's how you know you're doing numbers. You don't even remember. I don't. That's crazy. <laughs> I just knew. I just knew after that's what we are video in there. It's crazy how that came out. I remember when that came out. He was like, man, we need some songs to put together for tour. We didn't even think, man, that shit, that mixtape changed his life. It's just crazy. Well, yeah. So those are all the songs that you're putting out on your on your own and you collecting them and putting them on, exactly. on one project. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And then but that led to major label interest, right? Yeah, for sure. For all y'all too, yeah. as a group and and solo artists. It was pretty much, if not every label, then damn near every label wanted us individually for sure. Damn near, but for sure, us together, everybody wanted us. You feel me? It was like a bidding war, but I'm glad we went the way we went with Empire because that was like the best choice. Decided to stay independent. Exactly. Keep your masters. Exactly. Yeah. A label would have been, man. Yeah. Yeah. But y'all did get that. Uh, another big look was getting on the Black Panther soundtrack. Exactly. Yeah. Shout out Kendrick too for putting that together. So shout he- out, shout out, really shout out Kendrick, bro. I forgot bro name, but he hit me on the um on the what, what was his name? I don't know. Is his name? I think it's like his best friend or something. I'm not but sure. But he hit me on day free. Not day free. Not day free. Could have probably could have been punched. Could have been punched. My fault, bro, for not even remembering your name. But he um. Uh, he hit me on Twitter and put that together. Help us put that together. And then, so you ended up in the studio and with, with Kendrick working yep. on that track. Yeah. What was, what was that like? Man, uh, that shit was crazy. I remember Kendrick coming up to me. Um, this was after I dropped my own album. He came up to me and was like, man, uh, you got to shoot that how to work. And that was off my album. I'm like, man, you, you slapping that? And he's like, man, I slap all y'all. You, that just goes to show me, like, even though motherfuckers up here, they still looking at motherfuckers down here, you feel me? Even if they don't put it, they don't put it on IG, they don't put it on their story, motherfuckers are watching. Because you got to think, everybody is musicians, everybody humans. It don't matter if you up here on this level or this level. A motherfucker up there on this level could look up to a motherfucker on this level, you know? So that was just hella big that he, um, that, that nigga even said that, you feel me? That opened to my eyes to damn, like, motherfuckers really listening to us for real. Yeah, you never know who's listening. Yeah, you never know at all. That shit crazy. And uh, another, another... I mean, I think that was big for us, just seeing someone from the Bay yeah. on, on a, you know, Marvel Comics movie soundtrack. Yeah. And then Mozzie's on there, too. Yeah, shout out Mozzie. So it's also a big look for Northern California. He's also been, like, a big uh, supporter and collaborator with y'all, yeah, right? Facts. Mozzie was on my uh, on my first uh, my first mixtape. Shout out, bro. Yeah, y'all were kind of... I mean, he's been rapping for a long time, but y'all kind of started popping around the same time, would you Basically, say? Basically, yeah, 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 yeah. Basically. Hell yeah. Okay, so uh, at the same time, y'all having all this success, there's like a lot of internal uh, conflict in your group, right? Mm, internal conflict. Uh, yeah, I guess you could say that. I guess you could say that. Yeah, I mean, I don't. We don't got to get too deep into it because that's I don't like highlighting, uh, you know, negativity and shit like that. But it, I mean. Yeah, it was conflict, but really, within the group, not really. I think it was the outsiders getting into people's head, and that's really making the problem. Because for real, like I stopped. I, I really, when we was at a certain at a certain time in our when we was together, I really wasn't hanging out with all of them. I had my own shit going on. You feel me? I had my son. I'm out doing whatever I'm doing. I'm you feel me? So they still hanging out doing whatever they do. You feel me doing and I, there's a lot of stuff I don't know about. So like a lot of their problems that they had going on within um Tio and the boy and you know, that's really it, cause you know, G Lil G in jail and uh them niggas the only two niggas relevant. They really ain't got no problem though. I don't see no problem that they got. So I'm still trying to figure out what the problem is, you feel me? Yeah. I know a lot of shit happened and a lot of shit we you feel me ain't gonna speak about, but like realistically they ain't, ain't got no problem. I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty fucking confusing, bro. Because I tried to do some research mm-hmm. as I was preparing for you coming through, mm-hmm. and I, I couldn't really figure out what the shit was about or what really happened. <laughs> yeah, it's just uh, people from the outside, for real, yeah. getting into, uh, I mean, making it a problem. That's really what it is, because in all the reality, bro, them, they don't got no problem. If you call D, if, if I call D-Boy or call T.O., it ain't no problem between them. Like, yeah. you feel me? Them niggas yeah. can't say we're all... This woo woo like they ain't got no problem, real real shit. But you know, shit happens, man. I mean, I think it's hard for anyone in the group to stick together for a long time. Yeah, group, yeah, in a group just ain't 
Because it's all when you're in a group, it's always gonna be a lackey. It's always gonna be. Oh yeah, you good. It's always gonna be a lackey. It's always gonna be somebody cool. It's always gonna be a nigga at the top. You feel me? It's always gonna be just different roles you playing. So it's always gonna be a nigga with an ego. It's always gonna be a nigga that think he should have more and you shouldn't have more. You feel me? It's always gonna be problem within a group. No matter what. You could be family, you could be brothers, you could be sisters, you could be cousins or whatever. It's gonna be a problem because everybody go feel like they're entitled to something that they don't have. You feel me? Yeah. You like that. Well, I mean, all four of y'all got your own personalities. I'm sure you're all strong, strong personalities, and sometimes it's like the room ain't big enough for everybody, and, you know. Mm. So, or sometimes it's like uh, you don't want to. Somebody has one idea of how things should go, and somebody yeah. has another idea. But from what you're saying, it sounds like there's just kind of people in the in, in the mix. Just uh, yeah, people in the mix. Motherfucker was big headed. Think yeah. they was thought they was on Drake level and. Oh, Obviously, yeah. was not on Drake level. Is that when y'all said you were bigger than the Migos? I never said I was bigger than the Migos. <laughs> that was uh, that was young T.O. who said okay. we bigger than the Migos. You I me? wasn't mad at that, but uh, you I caused, wasn't, I caused wasn't mad at it either. But at the same time, you know, mm, it's a lot of shit, you know. <laughs> well, actually, he didn't, he didn't say you were bigger than the Migos. He said fuck the Migos. I think I think that was the the exact phrasing. No, I think T.O. said we bigger than the Migos. Lil G said, fuck the Migos. <laughs> Nigga, loud as fuck with them. Fuck the Migos. You feel I me? Mean? Then after that, I was like, damn. And this was in the middle of the time. I'm working on the tape with Yachty. So I'm like, man, this nigga, what the fuck? Fuck the Migos. What the Migos come? What they do? Like, I don't know what's going on. You feel I me? Mean? So uh, that nigga Yachty hit me after that. I'm like, man, bro, fuck the Migos. No, like, man. <laughs> you feel know I me? Mean? I don't know. But you know, it's all good, you know. I mean, yeah, shit happens. I wasn't mad at that. I, I you know, I like, I like that young energy. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Nigga was turned up for real. So yep. you can't blame it. They was, I mean, you can't blame a young, a young nigga from the hood with money having his way with all this popularity being a superstar. I mean, you know, it's gonna happen. So it is. Yeah, it is. and I ain't gonna lie, it was pretty many when uh, Lil G caught that case. Yeah, that was many too. I'm sure that was many for y'all. Just you know that being a person in your group, and uh, he's sitting down right now. Uh, so that's crazy how that turned out. Yeah, but y'all kept him pushing. After you did one album with the three of y'all together, right? Yeah, yeah, but the yeah. three of us. And then uh, really, our first album was with the three of us. Lil G was probably on what one song, two songs. Yeah, it kind of seemed like he was always on his own. Yeah, his own it was, uh, that, the first album was us two. You know what I mean? So. Got it. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, just one thing I would say is, like, I just I, I was curious to see what you think of this now that some time has passed because yeah. a lot of shit went public, like, back and forth on the internet mm -hmm. uh, between y'all. And I feel like uh, when you're young and you're in the moment, it's kind of hard to know how to navigate that. Yeah, for sure. Sometimes even me, people send me some crazy shit or write some crazy shit, and I gotta right. I gotta calm myself down and yeah, fact. recognize, hey, I got a big platform, man. Facts. I can't promote no fucking hater right now. No god, you can't promote no hater. Yeah. Okay. No um, but at the time, and, and also too, you got fans who like maybe they don't want to see that shit from you. Yeah, facts. But at the time, there was a little more back and forth going on. Um, how do you feel about that now in terms of like? You know, just for the youngsters that might be watching about when personal differences go on to the internet. What you mean back and who's going back and forth with the internet? Uh, I saw like T.O. saying some shit about you. I saw, I mean, I don't know if you were, I don't know if it's back and forth. Yeah, let me know. I need to hear something so I can, you feel me? I want to, I want to. I'm not know. trying to be messy either. I'm I just mean, saying. Yeah, if it was you know. on the internet, you can't be messy. Mm -hmm. You feel me? So I got, I got, you got to jog my memory. Well, I don't know if it was a back and forth then. Maybe that's the wrong phrasing, but basically, yeah. Shit, on the internet. shit that could have been handled privately got aired out publicly. Uh, so I wanted to see what you think of that now as some time has passed and you're a little bit older. I'm trying to figure out what he said. I really don't remember what he said. I, I mean, I don't want to quote him or misquote him, but... Yeah, I don't want to misquote him. Uh, I mean, I never really cared. I ain't never uh, spoke on bro on the internet or say anything, you feel me, about bro, because ain't no reason to, you feel me? I ain't got nothing bad to say about uh nothing bad to say about dude. You feel me? I wish him nothing but the best. And you know it is what it is. Fair enough. Yeah. 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 No, I mean I think that's the right way to handle it. And uh if you didn't even remember what was said, then that's probably a good thing. But a lot of the 
And a lot of them niggas was doing inter- did a thousand interviews and was saying all type of shit that was, you feel me? I do want to, I can't remember though. I want to speak on it, but I really can't. It, it's too much to remember. It was this interview, this interview, this interview. Oh, I'm saying this and this interview. You feel me? I, I can't, I can't really remember everything, but yeah, you know, motherfuckers be, you know, motherfuckers be feeling themselves. Yeah, that that's where I was going. I would like I said, I wasn't trying to be messy or like dig no, you ain't up, messy. You good, dig good. up some old old shit, but just yeah. um no, you good. Just from the outside looking in, like I said, I even hold myself to this standard. Like Facts. sometimes that shit don't look so good. No, on God, on God, on God. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of shit didn't look good within the um within a little breakup, you know, there was a lot of shit going on. Just period, within our group, in the streets, all type of shit going on. That's it's, it's stories behind damn near all the, all type of shit that you don't know about. So you feel me? I be here all day explaining a lot of sure. the shit. You feel me? Yeah. But um, for the most part, you know, I ain't. I never was really tripping off none of that. You feel me? Because uh, ain't no reason to trip off of. Like I said. No good. Yeah. This is my first time meeting you, but you seem like a pretty level headed guy. Man, come on, man. I ain't. You'll never see me on the internet yelling. <laughs> 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 but you know, you know, motherfuckers be on their uh. Uh, motherfuckers be on their high horse and shit Gotta get shit off their chest, man yeah, Only person yeah. they can tell is the internet sometimes Yeah, yeah, yeah shit, no. shit happens God. I got a little saying I always say you need my permission to beef with me Man You like feel that. me, though <laughs> You feel me, though You beefing with me? You ain't even asked me yet like, how are you beefing with me? Come on, huh? man oh, man <laughs> Niggas is crazy That's no cap, though uh, Well, since then, since then I mean, no matter what happened with the group yeah. I mean, Y'all made fucking history And, yeah, I know, um bro. I feel like all four of y'all can stand on your own as solo artists. You've mm-hmm. had, you've had a really good uh, solo career. How many how many projects have you um, put out on your own? Mm, I want to say five. Let me think. Uh, Problem Child, Problem Child Two, Feel My Pain, um, uh, Time to Shine, All Net. That was what got the butter. The first All Net, and I think it's one more. If I'm not much, People's Champ Six. I got some shit. Free Smoke, seven. Yeah, I got some shit. Seven. Seven and finna be eight. Finna be eight. Finna be my eighth one. But I'm trying to drop at least four to five projects just this year. Yeah. You feel me? Because I've been lacking a lot with the work and everything. I ain't been on my music shit. I just been taking care of business and everything. So now I got to get back on my, you know? I mean, it feels like you just getting started. Yeah, in a sense. Yeah, exactly, though. In a sense. Where are some places that you... Want to take it because you're coming here to promote this new project. So I get the yeah. sense that you're 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 still hungry. Hell yeah. Where do, where do you want to take this rap game in the future? Man, man to the top. Cause I ain't gonna lie, I really just like with the SOBRBE thing. I envisioned this. I envisioned that back then before it was ever ever anything. Before it was even SOBRBE, I think I envisioned. I'm like, man, I think I had a dream, and I text one of my um. One of my cousins that used to rap or still rap, Young Day, he from Vallejo too. I texted him and was like, man, uh, bro, I ain't gonna lie, Cuddy, I really like got a vision that this rap shit could work. Cause I'm looking at all these rappers and at the time, er- at that time, everybody was just coming out. Like from the 21 Savages right. to everybody that's popping now, they was just like really coming out at that time. So I'm like, man, I'm looking at what they doing. And I'm like, bro, we got the same formula. That shit is easy. Put out music. We, I already know I go crazy. I already know the niggas I'm fucking with going crazy, so you feel me? I hit him and he was like, uh, that nigga never takes me back. And I was like, damn, you feel me? But uh, at the same time, I took that same vision and I turned it into something. So right now, I really got a good, a good ass vision of what can happen. I think I can make it happen. And I think that's going like, you feel me, taking this shit somewhere nobody never took it. But at the end of the day, you just got to put the work in. That's right. That's right. I mean, work beat talent any day. So as long as you're working, you got to go notice. Um, who are some artists outside of the Bay that that you, you want to work with? <clears throat> outside the Bay? Um, I mean, should we go, go like a fairy tale list or just a... Yeah, wish list. Wish list. I don't know if it's a fairy tale for you, man. I, I mean, mean you, know, you know, you got stripes in the game. Nah, nah, no cap, no cap. This should have happened. Yeah. But uh, damn, who I always want to work with outside the bay. Future always been like a top, a top nigga. I always listened to damn near since high school. So it'll definitely be future. Um, I don't want to be cliche and say something like Drake, but I fuck with Drake heavy too. Sure. I've been fucking with Drake since 
Drake came out. Drake was a big influence in my life. Hell yeah. For real, for real. And, um, outside the bay, uh, I don't know. I'll be naming, I'll be naming them really just the two, you feel me? Not to be Future and Drake, but that's like, I know I know I go crazy. I know I got crazy, but at the same time, I know my game need to be up here. So I'm not go even try to approach with my game right here. I got to make sure, you feel me? Yeah. You got to make sure it makes sense. No, I like that, man. I mean, you got you to gotta stay hungry. You got to stay hungry, no cap. Okay, I, I want to ask you this. Uh, in the Bay Area right now, like I said, you've been so influential. Mm-hmm. Who are some of the, the younger rappers, younger artists that you're looking out that you're like, oh, they're dope, they're doing their thing? Uh, I'm going to just start. First, I'm going to go Vallejo, and then I'm going to go to Bay. Because it's, it's a lot of young... Young niggas in Vallejo that's going crazy from the Lil Dames, Papa Got Bands, Lil Scoops, Baby Brother, um, uh, who else? Lil Kobe's from all the little baby do it. Shout out my uh, shout out my young niggas. Uh, to who else? To who else? To who else? Uh, shout out to Russell. The Russell going crazy. He came out the blue going crazy. I love how you doing it. Um, Annie from the north. Mm. Um. Who else out the V? Everybody out the V, if I forgot your name, you know what it is. Uh, it's a lot of talent out the V that need to be recognized for real. But out the bay that's going crazy right now, um, man, Money Bag Buzz, that's who I'm fucking with. Uh, the whole little EBK, they all going crazy. They got a wave right now that's crazy. Yeah. You feel my name? Kind of remind me of y'all. Exactly. I ain't gonna lie. That's what I'll be like, man, I get flashbacks every time I see them. But uh, they going crazy. Um, who else in the bay going crazy right now? It's a lot of motherfuckers in Oakland. There's too many people to name. You know, I start naming niggas in Oakland and forget a name, I'll be funking. So, you feel me? Uh, the whole Oakland. Uh, some people in Richmond doing their thing. Some people in Richmond doing their thing. Blaster. Shout out Blaster. Shout out the whole North. Um, it's a lot of niggas in the Bay. It's a lot of niggas in the Bay going crazy right now. A lot of niggas. Yeah, I know how it goes. You start naming a few people. Oh God, that's why I was like, yeah. man, I don't want to. I'd be here thinking like, man, did I did I say? You feel me? But it's a lot of people in the Bay. The Bay, uh, the Bay got a lot of talent. I just feel like we ain't reaching our potential, and everybody want to pinpoint why this this uh motherfucker to politics, which do play a big uh a big part into the music. But at the same time, motherfuckers got to realize, bro, this music. Is your way out of all of this politics shit. You feel me? Niggas got to put that shit to the side. And for a lot, it'd be a lot of motherfuckers that'd be scared to say they'd do a song with a motherfucker and then a motherfucker ask them what's up with it. They'd be scared to be like, oh, I ain't, I ain't in his politics, bro. I'm just, this music. People be scared to say that. I don't know why. Like, you feel me? They don't be like, want to stand on their own tent. And yeah. that'd be a real big, a real big problem. Motherfuckers don't want to speak up for themselves. So I just feel like motherfuckers got to put a lot of their politics to the side. Oh, yeah. There's talent out here for sure. I run into yeah. that even doing interviews. Man, come and on. I'm like, man, you can't tell me who the fuck to interview and who not to interview. Sorry. Man, I'm like, who the fuck go tell a nigga not to interview a nigga? Like, <laughs> you funking that hard? You politics that hard? Like, come on, bro. That's lame. That's, I don't know. I'm just raised different. You feel me? I don't even get down like that. You feel me? I salute everybody. Suckers. Uh, anybody. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? yeah. If you're doing your thing, you're doing your thing. Like, you can't hate. You feel me? That actually reminds me. I was gonna ask you as you got older too. Did you did you really feel like you had to make a conscious decision to leave certain shit alone in terms of like the streets and and oh, nah, for politics sure. and nah, for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. If you want to politic your whole life, you feel me? That's a whole different lane. That ain't that ain't the lane for music though. Yeah, you feel me? Music. That's a whole whole different agenda. You feel me? The streets is one thing, but music is a whole another thing. And you really can't. I mean. You really can't mix two. You see what everybody that's trying to mix two happen? Yeah. Kill or dead. Yeah, you, feel me? you can't mix two. If you go do this music shit, do this music shit. If you go do the street shit, do this street shit. You feel me? You ain't gonna be no sucker for not being in the streets how you was in the streets last year. You feel me? Like, motherfuckers just... Motherfuckers just be getting tricked out their position and tricked off the streets for real. That should be... Um, that should be crazy. That's some good game right there. Come on, man. Boys and girls. From a legit don't, don't 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 let these niggas trick you off the streets thinking you uh thinking you soft or something cause you ain't out here sliding, you ain't out here. You ain't I don't get like you, you feel me? Especially when you already to a point to where you making money and you Yeah. On, bro. I, I feel that all the time, man. Some of this shit's for the birds and yeah, some of these cats of is like, bro, do you wanna rap or not? Like because exactly. you got an opportunity to do something. Mm-hmm. 
And you're hearing from a platinum artist. Multi. Multi, excuse me. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> <With> respect. <laughs> Multi platinum artist, man. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, listen to what he's saying, man, and uh, go check out the new project. New project, um, February, February 8th. It might be the eighth by when this come out, so go get that right now on that too. Go on Brazy. You know what it is. Well, thanks for coming by, bro. On God, on God. Yeah, anytime you need our support, we're mm-hmm. here. History Debate Podcast. Yeah, thank you for having me. You know, I've been watching your shit on um, Instagram and on YouTube. My dad be watching your shit, too. That's what's really crazy. I should have brought him up here, but, you know, it's a blessing to be up here, and it's an honor. That's what's up, man. Thanks okay. for the support. Shout out so, to Pops. On God. Yeah. Before. Yes, sir. Recognize where you got the game. We got our own style, got our own slang. Northern California is a West Coast thing. This is the history of the bank. Recognize where you got the game. We got our own style, got our own slang. Northern California is a West Coast thing. This is the history of the bank.